Looking back over the past 50 years, the construction industry hasn't changed all that much. We are mostly still using the same materials, working with the same machinery and constructing buildings in the same way as before. Examining charts of industry digitalization, you will notice that the construction ranks just above agriculture and hunting in terms of adopting digital technologies. Some even argue that agriculture overcame construction with automated machinery working with GPS system thus making completely autonomous. But why? Why is like this? Traditional methods, project complexities, resistance to change and high investment costs are some of the reasons why our industry is so far behind others. Trying to identify the main reason for the current situation won't be productive, but focusing on finding the solution will be. Welcome to our channel. In this episode, we will discuss the concept of BIM and how it works. In any other manufacturing industry, a single product is perfected before mass production begins. Take the automotive industry for example. Before producing 100,000 copies of a car model, they fine-tune the initial prototype to the finest detail. Every nut, bolt, cable and button is meticulously tested and crafted to perfection before mass production starts. However, our products are buildings and they are mostly unique, usually constructed only once. It would be impractical to assemble a building and then ship it half away across the globe for installation. If we can't do that in the real world, at least now we can do it in a virtual one. And that's where BIM comes into play. BIM stands for Building Information Modeling or Model or Management. While modeling is the most common use, the other two components are equally important. A brief definition could be it's a digital representation of architectural, engineering and construction design focusing on construction and operating buildings or infrastructure throughout their entire life cycle. In a direct translation, building would mean object, information is geometry in digital form, and modeling is the distribution of information to better decision making. Although there are ways to incorporate BIM into a construction phase, it fundamentally belongs to the field of design and project management. BIM is an excellent tool with capacity to be a game changer, but it won't do it by itself. Simply put, we need to do things differently. To explain the whole situation better, we have a few breakdowns for you. First up, we got BIM dimensions. This is all about exploring the different levels of information within BIM. Picture it as assembling the puzzle. Each piece you fit together adds depth and understanding to the overall picture. Within 3D BIM framework, you typically find architectural elements, structural design, mechanical, electrical and plumbing systems, the surrounding site, reinforcement and interior design. In this part, we are mostly based on material quantities and geometry. 4D include integration of time-related data, allowing for the visualization, simulation of construction sequencing and project scheduling. 5D BIM On top of everything else, now the price factor comes into play. It ties together all previous elements by assigning each cost-related data and it helps us to understand how much money everything will cost. Here we are talking about the cost of manpower, materials and machinery. As we continue to push the boundaries of BIM, we acknowledge the existence of additional dimensions that have already been conceptualized, although they are not yet widely implemented in practice. Among them, 6D BIM extends to sustainability factors, enabling the assessment of environmental impact and life cycle analysis, while 7D BIM integrates facility management data for ongoing maintenance and operation of the constructed asset. The second critical factor in BIM environment is LOD, or level of development, which refers to the level of detail and reliability of information within a model at different stages. We categorize LOD into six stages, each reflecting different level of completeness, with higher number indicating greater complexity and more details. The selection of LOD depends on desired outcomes and objectives for the model, guiding stakeholders in decision making and project management process. The third very important partition is the level of BIM. You've probably seen this picture somewhere before and it explains what is really happening here. At level 0 there is no real BIM involved. The project is likely handled using traditional CAD drafting methods without any collaboration or integration of information. Level 1 involves the use of 3D CAD for individual disciplines, but there are no collaboration between disciplines. 
each party creates its own model and information exchange is limited. Level 2, however, is a significant step forward in collaboration. Each discipline creates its own 3D model, but they are shared and coordinated in a common data environment. This usually means that they have cloud-based platform accessible via web browser where they can upload all their information and communicate, but the model remains separate and information exchange may still require manual intervention. It's important to note that when we talk about BIM, this level is currently the most in use. Level 3 this is the highest level of BIM. It involves true collaborative working where all disciplines work on a single shared project model. All data is dynamically exchanged within a cohesive BIM model, allowing real-time collaboration and coordination throughout the project lifecycle. In essence, the key distinguish lies in level 2, where models are shared and coordinated but remain separate, whereas in level 3 all participants collaborate on a single model. This promotes real-time collaboration and coordination. A very important point is that if you work in 5D BIM software, it does not mean that you work in BIM level 5. You are still in level 2 or if you are lucky in level 3. The true impact of BIM on the entire system is best illustrated by weighing its advantages against its disadvantages. Firstly, let's talk about centralized database. Imagine everything from the initial spark of an idea in architect's mind to the moment tenants receive their keys, cleverly organized in one place. All paper, documents, contracts and all project changes are securely stored on a cloud-based hard drive. No more lost files or faded papers in forgotten drawers. Plus, going digital means less paper and fewer trees are cut down. With all data accessible to everyone, transparency has become the new norm. Any change that is made can be traced back, leaving no room for blame games. Communication and collaboration thrive in this environment. Inputting a single piece of data notifies all participants of changes simultaneously, ensuring everyone is kept in the loop. Visualization is another game changer. Not only does it enhance understanding, but it also reduces the risk of impulsive errors often made in a hurry. Advanced features like clash detection allow us to identify and resolve issues before they escalate on construction site. As BIM software evolves, so does our efficiency. With each improvement, tasks that once took hours now require just minutes, boosting productivity with faster work. Lastly, BIM excels at handling vast amount of data. As projects continue to push boundaries and presents new challenges year after year, the volume of information grows exponentially. From quantity takeoffs to the complex analysis, BIM software swiftly processes it all, delivering results in seconds with just a few clicks. The possibilities are endless, leading to exceptional outcomes. It's important to recognize that BIM brings significant changes in the current workflow, which can be a bit of a challenge to integrate into a current system. From initial investments in software and equipment to the training of personnel, we are also not so familiar with standardization, which is still in ongoing process. Before diving into the actual work, it's crucial to establish clear guidelines for process sequencing and participant hierarchy. Without this structure, chaos could emerge if everyone begins inputting data simultaneously. Additionally, a well-defined project scope is essential to determine the appropriate level of detail. Striking a balance between detail and cost effectiveness is a major thing in the BIM workflow. Otherwise, we risk investing in the overly expensive models or choosing cheap summons that lack essential information. In today's world, as you know, information is money. Therefore, not all companies are keen to share their data as they aim to protect their knowledge. Conclusion In the current situation, BIM is mostly used at level 2, while serious industry investment shows a tendency for much deeper development. The integration of new technologies such as AI, machine learning and Internet of Things enable faster work, making better decisions and design solutions in a BIM environment. The savings potential is great, but it requires experience and effective implementation. Workflow knowledge and construction experience are key to utilize the full potential of BIM technology. Let's not forget that BIM is just a tool used by people and only they have ability to impact our daily lives with their remarkable projects. BIM isn't a revolution, it's an evolution in the way we work. It's time to shift from working hard to working smart. If you like this video, check our YouTube channel and look for more interesting content. 
Thank you for watching and see you next time.